Okay, well, thank you, Parent. In essence, is our way of delivering customer service uh, in the cloud. Um, and after I've covered off uh, uh, my element of the webinar, I'll be handing over to Richard, who is our Chief Technical Officer, who's been with us for a couple of years. And I am absolutely certain, having seen the demonstration uh, a few times now, that you will all take an awful lot away from that. And the third thing to introduce to you is, is Better PLC. Uh, Better PLC is our demonstration environment that we've set up uh, to showcase all of the things that are included in our positive contact proposition uh, from not just Salesforce but our other uh, application partners. So moving on then, I um, thought it'd be, it'd be good to kind of um, set, the, set the, the, the scene for this and the, the challenges that we'd, we'd like our demonstration to um, kind of speak to today are listed there. There's, there's, there's an awful lot of, of, of customer and employee challenges when running a customer service organization. Um, but it is really key um, that in order to leverage not only your brand, but your, your offer, that you pay real heed to how you treat your customer. Um, I don't want to sort of talk too much about how uh, service enhances the experience, but really what, what we feel is that positive contact and, and what we're trying to, to, to kind of communicate today is, is all about taking your customer to a state where they will happily advocate you based on the service that you deliver. Um, and in essence, that clearly delivers profitability to you as an organization. So the things that we'll touch on today are the, the increasing customer expectations and the power that they have. Um, all our customers these days, whether we like it or not, are multi-channel. Um, we all strive and they all strive to, to, to want a personalized experience. It's so crucial. Uh, in order to maintain trust with your customer that you offer a consistent experience regardless of how they contact you. And what we want to really uh, uh, sort of get across is that, that lowering the effort that the customer has to put into their experience is really, really important in terms of how you stack up against your competition. In order to do that, of course, you need a, a happy and engaged employee workforce. And you also need an organization that can recognize on a real-time basis, how they can drive continuous improvement. So what, what is our kind of methodology around delivering that? Well, as I said before, it's, uh, it's something we branded positive contact. And just to give you a brief overview, this really is, is how we help you as an organization manage your omnichannel environment. It's how we really, really intelligently route uh, customers through to the most appropriate resource. It's how then that inquiry or service request is delivered and the tools that are required to empower the, the, the employee to deliver it. It's about engaging that employee. And as I said, it's about offering the right level of management information that allows the organization the right insight to make the required changes. So breaking that apart a little bit, uh, integrated omni-channel management. Well, as I said before, customers are, 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 are highly savvy when it comes to channels now. And every single customer that you have will be a multi-channel customer, whether that's a mix of face-to-face -face and telephone or email and online or indeed in the new social channels. And I'd like to sort of say that, that a lot of organizations, a lot of customers in terms of customer effort also perceive that, that actually the best service for many is no service at all, which is all around driving down the customer effort. We can only do this if we fully understand what they're wanting to engage with us about. And as I will keep stressing, a consistent experience across all channels is paramount. So in terms of intelligent routing, we believe that given the fact that we know so much about our prospects and our customers these days, we ought to be able to anticipate the situation they're in at the time when they contact us. If we can do that, then we should use that data and use that information to really give a wow moment to the customer and put them through to the appropriate resource, whether that be self-service, whether that be an appropriately skilled advisor, or even a community with the information that they might need to resolve their own query. And then in terms of offering the right tools 
to the desktop for the advisor to be able to deliver to that service request or inquiry is really crucial. And this is tools that actually not only allow them to take detail and authorize and then get the problem resolved, but actually it really empowers them in terms of being able to deliver that on a first contact resolution basis. So the right knowledge articles, the right information, the right way to be able to communicate with others in order to resolve that query. As I said before, in order to be able to do all of this, you need an engaged and switched on advisor community. And what we really need to focus on these days is, is how we get the tools to those guys to make sure that they've got the right level of support in order to deliver the service. And also that we recognize them when they are delivering the service and actually treat them at them accordingly as well. And finally, in terms of driving forward improvement, this is about gathering the right type of operational management information, combining that with the right customer information, and combining that again with the right uh, customer satisfaction data. And being able to roll that up into something that's simple and easy to use for the operation to continually improve. And that's a very high level view of um, our positive contact proposition. But how do, we, how do we achieve that? Well, we achieve that through our partnership with Salesforce and using their service cloud, but also by using best of breed applications along with that. And clearly for us, uh, it's important to stress our, uh, our IP and our fantastic consultancy team here at Make Positive who can actually make that happen. So we can deliver you a single view of the customer. We can deliver you very, very intelligent situational routing. We can deliver you efficient customer transacting we can improve the performance of your organization in terms of the advisor community, and we can deliver that information you need in order to make advised, informed decisions. And if for your customers, that will deliver an experience that is personalized to them, and it will mean that we can drive minimal effort for them as well. What we'd like to do is just talk around five principles that we've developed um, in order to hopefully kind of hone the messages that we want to get across. So principle number one, channels are the consumer domain. Let's not kid ourselves, we do not own the channels of contact. It's up to the consumer and our customers how they wish to contact us. We are there to manage those channels effectively as we can. But as I said before, customers are increasingly multi-channel. And they'll, they'll, they'll want out of hour service and they want 24 hour service and they want to be able to communicate with you in a way that suits them, not that suits you. So principle number two, focus on the experience that the customer has. Ask yourselves, when was the last time you tested out your own organization in terms of the service delivery that you, you, you get? When was the last time you phoned your contact center? When was the last time you dropped an email in? And when you're doing all this, make sure when you are communicating with customers, make sure you're communicating in their language. So it's really helpful to kind of understand and plot the journey maps for your customers. Third principle, clearly, engage your customers. So customers are really prepared to give you data about themselves. They're really prepared to share that, but they're only prepared to do that because of what you can do for them. So when they are exchanging data with you and they are telling you things, listen, and then engage, and then make sure you use that in terms of your, your contact experience with them. And number four, engage your employees. Um, somebody very wise once told me that the, 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 uh, the only thing worse than having people leave your customer service environment is having the people you don't want to stay, stay. So you've got to really understand your employees, you've got to engage with them, you've got to make sure that they're on message and that they're delivering customer service. The best thing to achieve from a customer service environment in my view is when you leave at the end of the day as an advisor, you can go home and say, I've helped a customer today and that's really, really important. We can only do that if they've got the tools in order to deliver that. And at long last, the, the, the final principle, you must um, make sure that your, 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 your organization is aligned and integrated. And finally, after many, many years of customer service being really, really important to a lot of organizations, it seems to have broken through the barrier and is important to everyone now. And more and more organizations have got a, a, a a chair ready at the top table for whoever it is that owns customer service and customer experience. And I think that's really good and I think it's really important. 
Okay, um, I'm now going to hand over to Richard Clark, who's going to take you through uh, positive contact using the Better PLC demo environment. Thank you, Martin. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to attempt to demonstrate everything Martin just talked about in 25 minutes or less, if I can. So apologies for the fast pace. Uh, the session is being recorded and will be available via the Success Community Group at the end of the webinar. So let's get cracking on. So I'm going to go through a number of scenarios with different people. Our first scenario is Rick. Rick's a chaotic guy. He has lots of toys and technology. He's not a customer of ours today of Better PLC. Better PLC is a retail company doing electronics goods, it has physical stores, it has an online presence, uh, an online shop. So let's jump into the demo. So Rick's someone who's heard about a photo competition we have, Better Fit Band, and he submitted an entry via Instagram and Twitter. Um, I don't know if people are aware, but Instagram recently overtook uh, Salesforce in the number of um, sorry, we just got a problem with the, what's on the webinar? No problem. Okay, sorry, carry on. Um, uh, Instagram recently overtook Twitter in the number of active users, 300 million. A lot of people are using things like Facebook and uh, Twitter already, um, but they're not uh, using things like Instagram. So I want to show you how that can work. So let's look at our marketing manager. Our marketing manager has created that FitBand competition and posted it out on social channels. Um, he's used a, a standard Salesforce campaign with a hashtag better fit band. And through some technology we've added, we can see here some photos that have been added to this as a competition. And if I refresh the page, I'll see any new uh, photos that have been submitted. Okay. I can go ahead and pick some of those pictures that I want to reward. I can take those and import those to moderate the content that we display. Uh, so I like this picture from Rick Thompson here. I'm going to select that one and import it. Um, I don't like many of the others, so I'm going to leave those off our selections. I've now imported that and it's available now within our uh, list here. And I'm going to um, put on my website a gallery of all those photos that we've processed. Now, people can come onto here, onto our website, and look at the photos they like and go through the different social media channels and vote and comment on the ones they like best. And we can get the feedback from that into our organization here, see the ones with a number of comments winners liked. And we can pick our winners and send them a reward. So I'm going to uh, reward um, Rick for his picture. There he is. I'm going to select that one and send him a reward. And the reward is basically he can come into a store and he can have £100, or sorry, 100%, he can have a free fit band, basically. Quite generous, you can agree. That's fantastic for Rick. He receives that award through whichever channel uh, we've selected. In this case, I've sent a QR code that he can display within the loyalty app of Better PLC. Um, but it could equally be a Groupon code they could use on our online store. That's brilliant, that's wonderful, but what else can I do about Rick? How do I take Rick forward uh, to another level? Well, what we can do is socially profile people, and I'm going to pick another contestant here, Francesco. And what I want to do is get more information about Francesco so I can market to him on the right channels. So here we have a button called Social Contact. And what I'm going to do, I could look up by any information I've got. Here I've got his Twitter ID, I've also got uh, Francesco's uh, email ID, and I'm going to look up by email in this case. I could equally do a mobile phone number, and I can find more information out. I've got an 89% chance this is the right Francesco, which is good news for, obviously, for um, data protection reasons. I need to hold accurate information about people. Uh, I can see his clout scores at 52, pretty good. And I can get additional information about his contact information. And this is all information that Francesco shares on his social networks and that is public. It's not private information when there's no back doors here. It's all public information. I can also see which topics he's interested in, which is extremely valuable to me when it comes to finding the right people for a campaign and which websites he's active on. I can get some demographic information I didn't know before, like his age, because he shared his date of birth. 
I can see all these organizations, probably from LinkedIn, that he's worked at. But even more than that, you can see here why I picked Francesco. You can see every social network Francesco's active on, whether it's Blogger, Twitter, Foursquare, uh, Clout, YouTube, About.me, Instagram, Vimeo, on and on and on and on, Pinterest, everything, LinkedIn. And not only that, but on some of them, like Twitter, I can also see his influence. I can see he's got um, over 1,000 followers and nearly 2,000 uh, people he's following. So he's got quite a, a reach and community that I'm interested in. And I may want to treat him in a special way because of that, even though he's not a customer. I may want to reward him, acknowledge him, and encourage him to participate. And I can import all that data into Salesforce to augment the information I already have. And I can categorize those topics we saw into a number of articles, a number of areas that I'm interested in running campaigns in. And through uh, Salesforce, or ideally through mass email tools, such as .mailer and exact target, I can actually send him the selected articles that are filtered based on the information he's interested in. And if he was a member of our website, I could have those same articles present personalized content, personalized news stories to him as well. So you can see there that Rick has an engaging experience. He's not yet a customer, but we've um, engaged with him on a photo competition, and we tried to drive him into a store to become a customer of a free fit band. And here's just a quick summary of what I just did, uh, just for the takeaway after the uh, session, so you can see which uh, items I went through. So what did we do there? So uh, the challenge was channel consistency. So we used campaigns, Twitter and Instagram's API to deliver that. Um, we wanted clean, usable data. So there was automated dedupe there. I didn't point it out. But when we had those campaign members, both leads and contacts picked up automatically. If I'm an existing um, better PLC customer and I'm accessing the uh, photo competition, it will find that because it knows my Twitter or Instagram ID and it will automatically reuse my existing contacts. Uh, we're segmenting people using the full contact API to add that information about them, and we're using personalization through mass email tools and uh, website content. So the idea is to convert those prospects. Let's move on to our second persona. Jack is a frequent buyer um, of uh, products online. Um, she you know, offers credit, offers praise when it's due, and um, she's happy to give people her data as long as it's being used. So let's see what Jack's experience is. So for Jackie, I've got Jackie on a uh, website here on the Better PLC website. She's browsing around, look at the information we do, access our website. We've got a live chat option here on the website as well. And she finds the product that she's interested in. She sees here there's smart TV is what she's been looking for. And she sees she can add that to an online basket. But she's struggling to find information about our delivery times. Well, luckily, we have a proactive chat that since she's been on the page for a long time and has decided to intervene and offer her that live chat. This is standard Salesforce functionality. Um, so we also have in here the ability to promote something. So actually, we're giving her some contextual information that there's an offer on our LED TVs. We've driven that based on the uh, basket that she's already started creating to encourage her to go through with the purchase. Uh, she chooses to engage with us on live chat to find out about those delivery times. So first we have a pre-chat form where she identifies herself to us. Hi, can you tell me what the delivery times are for the TV? What's that ringing? Let's go to our advisor, Wendy. She's logged into Live Agent and she takes the call. When, before she accepts the chat, she can see both the details of the pre chat and the recently viewed products. So she knows uh, which uh, pages that Jack has already been on on the website, if she's already been on Knowledge Base, and can, uh, when she accepts that call, make sure she's dealing with it appropriately without repeating questions that's already been asked. <coughs> So our live chat opens up, and I'm just going to say hi to Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Apologies for my slow connection here. Hi, Jackie. Let me just check that for you.
Okay. Now, because we've equipped uh, Wendy with our Salesforce knowledge, um, I can either from a creating a case or within the search here find information about the delivery times. And I pick the article that I'm interested in. And I can see here a large item such as TV, seven days a week, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I can respond to Jackie within that chat to tell her that information. Okay, we can deliver from seven days a week. We have a next day delivery available now. Jackie continues the conversation with Wendy. That's awesome. Apologies for the Americanism I used. Um, and the agent would actually then try and uh, uh, encourage to, but would you like me to order that for you? And just for brevity, I won't carry on with the conversation, but at the end of that process, um, Jack is going to say, no, I've actually got it in the basket. I prefer to order online. I'm an online shopper. So she ends that live chat. Now, at the end of that chat, we have the option to present a post-chat form. Now, if, Wendy, if uh, Jackie was a logged-in customer, we may do that based on when we last surveyed her, so we don't bombard her with surveys every time she engages with us. Was the problem involved in resolved today? Yes. So obviously we want to keep this quite simple on here. And what's the uh, CSAT score she wants to give us? Well, we got a 10. That's fabulous. Great service. And all this information comes through into our sales force. So we have that TV in our check out now um, basket. I'm going to check out on the better website, which as you can see is all running on force.com sites. Uh, don't worry, this isn't, obviously isn't real details I'm using. And you can transact, we'd hand that off to our payment processing, complete the uh, process and place the order within Salesforce. That's brilliant. Uh, Jackie's TV is now going to arrive um, a couple of, uh, a, a day later. And a couple of weeks later, she's having a problem with that television she just ordered. So how does she engage with us? Well, she decides to phone up the PLC and ask for help um, as she's at home at the time. Wendy's still our advisor here. I'm just going to close down this chat. Okay, and I'm just going to, on my phone here, dial the Better PLC number. And using our uh, CTI partner, uh, Wendy's going to take that call on New Voice Media. So I'm just dialing now, and I'll just put some speakerphone. Hopefully you can hear it. Please note that this call may be recorded. Good morning, and thank you for calling Better PLC. We recognise that you are a new customer to Best PLC, and we are now pushing you through to the correct team. Thank you. Right, just make sure both of those are on mute. So I've got a call-in session now between myself, um, which is always freaky, and I can see here now New Voice Media has picked up that call, so I identified the customer and it's screen popped Jackie's account here. So the agent answering that call already knows who's calling, uh, can have access to the details of previous um, cases that Jackie's raised and the uh, outcomes of those. And we've got a number of components plugged in here, which I'll talk more about later. We can create a case from here for Jackie's inquiry. So Jackie's inquiry is about her TV. Um, and her inquiry is her TV uh, is losing its channels. So TV uh, tuning is being reset. Now I can see here there's a number of articles already suggested from knowledge from doing that. Um, I happen to know from my previous experience, customers have had this problem uh, when their firmware doesn't um, always download properly. 
And I talked to Jackie about that, and she confirms that previously that's what happened. There was a firmware download, and it failed. So um, she'd like me to send her a knowledge article about how to do that. I offered to tell her, talk her through it over the phone, but she says she's at work. So I'm going to email that to her. So I'm going to attach that to the case, and we're going to send her an email about that subject. Okay. I'm going to pick my uh, template for my knowledge articles. filled in the case details for me, and just put the uh, firmware reset. I'm just going to send that off. So Jack is going to receive that in their inbox in due course. Here we are. I was going to rely on the here's one I preferred, um, did earlier, but here we go. Here's the one that's just arrived. And we can see here we've got the knowledge article attached as a PDF with all the information required uh, for Jackie to fix the problem. Cool. So um, that's resolved Jackie's problem. Uh, I'm just going to end that call. Choose one. How likely are you to recommend best DLC for friends or family? Uh, a nine. Between one and nine, with one being not likely at all and nine being very likely. Please press one to leave further feedback, two to request that a manager calls you back, or three to submit your survey. And submitted. Just wait for the wrap up. Okay, so we see there, um, Jack's been through that process, she's got a TV. Uh, we actually also, Wendy, booked a uh, appointment for an engineer to come out and fix the TV in case the firmware reset didn't uh, work. Um, Jackie gets home, she follows those instructions, does the reset, and everything's worked. And she's really pleased by that. She sees in our email there's a link to our website for the community page. She logs into the community, she doesn't have an identity as far as she knows, so she uses her Facebook ID to sign into the better community. Now she could self-serve here using the cases and close the case herself, um, but she wants to be sure that no engineer is going to turn up out of the blue. She sees again we've got a, a chat option on the page and she's decided to select that. Now because Jack is in the community, we know who she is, we don't need to ask her on the live chat who she is or what her problem is. We, she's got an option of using an existing case. So here we pick the case that she's been dealing with and she just says, um, thanks, that all worked. That worked. I'll just the typing. Can you cancel the engineer? Can we route that? And we could even route that to the agent that dealt with it last time if we wanted to, if the agent's available, or someone else in the same team. And again, we go through a live chat session, the agent cancels the call out, and if we want to, we can survey Jackie again when the live chat ends. So I think you can see there how live chat can be used in multiple ways to interact, how the surveys can be used. Okay. Let's move on to our next scenario. One more thing. So uh, just in terms of how that solution was delivered, uh, we had uh, channel consistency was through the service console, uh, Salesforce live chat, CTI using new voice media, Salesforce customer communities, uh, Salesforce knowledge, um, but we also had things like Salesforce for social media there as well being used, and email to case. So we have other channels, people can email, support at betterplc.co.uk, you can tweet at betterplc, you can uh, send a Facebook message to betterplc as well. So we've got all those channels open to raise cases. We have customer satisfaction, I didn't show it, but we, in addition to the above, we have the universal timeline, shows all our interactions 
with uh, Jackie throughout the lifetime of her as a customer in one easily view, easy view. And these are all apps of the App Exchange. We have Survey Force used for creating our surveys and having consistent surveys and answers across all our channels, both voice and live chat. And that helps deliver us a single customer view of their responses and our engagement across all those channels. We made sure we uh, reduced the customer effort. So we had the situational routing of Jack as a new customer. We routed her immediately rather than prompt her, do you want sales or service? We recognize if she's calling two weeks after receiving a product from us, she's probably an issue with that product. Um, and via that, she was able to engage with us across multiple channels. She can initiate constant contact on live chat, on a phone, and continue on any other channels as well. Although we didn't demonstrate it, uh, employee engagement, we've also got the support for case warm. If Wendy had struggled to answer that call or needs to escalate it, then a group of people can be immediately alerted to that, probably more relevant to a B2B than a B2C account. And operational learning, so uh, using process flows, we can give feedback. So when uh, every time that Wendy gets a 10, maybe we want to send her a notification or a chat message to let her know that. She gets immediate feedback about her performance, makes her feel happier in her job during the day, rather than waiting for an end of day report. But we've also got other technology which I'll show in a minute about a wall board where, Jackie, where Wendy can see her performance uh, and all the access to all the recordings and transcripts from live chat is available to um, Wendy within Salesforce. So we talked briefly about situational routing. One of the key things about situational routing is it's while it's um, possible with anything that tools like New Voice Media to make calls into Salesforce and to uh, pull that information out, you don't want to slow down your call plan with lots of decisions and lots of logic. So within Salesforce, using something as simple as a formula field, you can return the values that are most important to you to drive those call plans. That means when you want to make a change to that, you can use the same change management processes in Salesforce to push that through your organization that's alive without any risk to your call plan or having to create copies of call plans and uh, split calls between them. So whether it's by VIP accounts, high value customers, new customers, or if someone's had a poor previous experience, you can route your calls accordingly. So our final um, avatar here is Kim. Kim works in customer service. She knows how it all works. Um, she's active on social media as well. She can get, enjoys engaging with people online. Customer experience is very important to her as a customer service agent herself. Um, and she wants to interact with us. So Kim's already a customer. She's one of our advocates. And we're gonna, she's going to engage with us on the better community. So she chooses to sign into the community using Twitter as her favorite channel. Just waiting on Twitter now. Still waiting on Twitter now. Still waiting on Twitter, that one. Let me just refresh the page here. Curse of a live demo. Ah, there we go. It's probably timed out while I've been demonstrating the rest. Okay, and we see here within the community, um, Kim's an active member on some of our um, groups already, and she's having conversations not just with other users, but with other members of Better PLC. She wants to join the uh, Vacuum User Group because she's got a great idea. So she joins that group. It's an open group she can enter. Within that group, she posts an idea that she has that she wants to put wheels on a handheld vacuum. It sounds like a daft idea to me, but this is a genuine idea I found when I Googled it about innovation in handheld vacuums. So this is so it runs smooth up the wall without uh, scratching, fair enough. And this time it's our marketing managers inter interactive with her. It could have been a product manager. He thinks this is a good idea, and he wants to invite her along to a focus group on handheld hoovers. It's really engaging uh, for Kim to have that. Uh, so within here, um, Kim can also engage with us in many ways. Uh, within the chatter, we're using reputation, so that uh, she's got a level, she's got a score, she's up to level four. So again, it's uh, getting her to come back to the um, portal each time. And we've got uh, some personalized settings as well. So through the portal here, through the chat preferences uh, page, she can also change things like her channel preferences, where she wants to get our emails from us, whether it's email, SMS, mobile what time of day she prefers to be contacted. And again, we can use that within our outbound comms to her. 
And also, uh, if we had a subscription product, which we'd have here soon, she can put in any uh, dates where she wants to take maybe a payment holiday from us for that subscription. And any changes in channel, she may not want to receive phone calls while she's away, she might refer to get everything by email. And also, finally, the survey. She could opt out or set a time frame at which, or the frequency at which she receives surveys. Okay. So customer effort is um, through the use of sites, communities, chatter, and the social login, the author providers. You saw there we had, uh, I think, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Those are the standard ones provided, very easy to configure. But also, if you want to do things like Google Plus that we have, you can use tools like Janrain to do that which exposes over 30 other uh, networks for uh, logging. We have ease of access through the omni-channel service and the use of things like knowledge. And we have personalization, uh, contact preferences, uh, the relevant product office, and the news that come to, Jack, to Kim accordingly. And through loyalty, we gain that through the use of chatter, the reputation, and although I haven't had time to demonstrate it today, we have a mobile application for Better PLC as well, where uh, the uh, codes that Rick had and that Kim has can be accessed within store. And finally, we, we reward our customers through the use of competitions, special offers to those uh, advocates we have, and we can even let them be trusted users on our portal, on our community, uh, to report any malicious content. So what we tried to demonstrate there is taking someone from uh, marketing to, as a, a prospect or not even a known customer all the way through in a smooth line up towards being a customer advocate. Uh, too often we see uh, customers, they sort of get marketed, they all sounds great, they deal with sales, they get the product, and then maybe expectations fall, maybe the first problem's resolved, but they're not then engaged beyond that and they drift away. So we're trying to keep that person engaged with us throughout the lifetime. So let's look at the other side. Where was the employee engagement? Well, we have two uh, avatars here. We have James as customer service manager, and Wendy, we've already seen. So Wendy had access to knowledge. She had access to the same channels across, or knowledge on all the channels. And she can reach out to other topic experts within the organization on Chatter. Um, she can access all the systems she had there within the Salesforce console. Um, data is summarized graphically for rapid understanding, and less time is spent transferring calls because of that situational routing. The continuous feedback we talked about already in terms of the messages she gets in terms of her performance. But she also needs to see her her performance and how it compares to her peers. And we want to make her sure she's a practice problem solver. So flipping back to Wendy quickly, let's just see how we delivered some of that. So within here, within Jack's account, we have details, we have some custom charting components. I've even got recent transactions from a finance application from Better Finance to see what her bank account details are. This is coming through Canvas from Heroku. And if I look at some of our account information, let's pick someone called Salesforce you may have heard of. Again, on the B2B side, I can have additional feeds like company news coming in. Information about that, so live news feeds about that company presented in the portal. I can also provide Jackie access to a wall board of information. So this would be typically displayed within the uh, office where she works and it's accessible to all, and it's accessible on Salesforce One as well. And on here we can see Wendy's actually our top advisor as it scrolls through. We can see uh, within her, her team, we've got a red flag on the emails. They've reached our 20 uh, email limit per day of open emails. But we're doing okay, four running phone calls, 18 social media ones, we want to tackle that soon, and all the other items. We have situational information about where our customers reside in terms of providing some contextual information about the weather, but again, that could be any type of news feed. And on the right, as a company, how are we doing? We've closed 37 cases today, but just confirmed we've got 15 unread tweets and three unread Facebook messages. And obviously, again, I can put information out to the group, to the team, to motivate them, tell them about special offers that are coming in, uh, without them having to read uh, email when they're busy, it comes up on the screen in the office. So very quick slide on the technology we've used there. I'm going to skip through that very quickly, uh, except for one item. So the collaboration. So um, Wendy was able to collaborate with customers, not from switching to the community, but because we're using Passport for communities. 
So when she goes on to her chatter, she can engage with those customer communities from with it without having to change into the community portal. So you see questions from Kim here, Wendy can answer within her standard chatter feed, a single chatter feed. So in terms of James, what's his um, um, experience? Well, he's a visible, same visibility as that wall board we just saw, uh, but he also wants to see each agent's contribution to MPS. Um, he can access the call recordings in terms of going through any uh, red flag, if we get a, a negative score, a poor score, a CSAT score, he can take that advisor aside, they can play back that recording within Salesforce and see how the performance was. So he can identify new training needs. He can also see those people who are the stars who he may want to turn into coaches on the positive side of things. Um, we have a dashboard that he can use to see about his performance as well. So if I switch to James, we see here a dashboard. And this dashboard isn't just data that you'd normally see in Salesforce. We have uh, call data coming in from New Voice Media about the number of calls, the amount of time spent with each customer, and the no number of calls from each customer, which may not be the same thing. We can see with our call plan, how is it behaving, how is the ACD, where are most of our calls. The good news is 60% of calls are going to sell, that's what we want to see. And I can see a trend of calls over time. And you know, this is Salesforce uh, standard dashboards, you can display anything that you can push the data into Salesforce. On the second column here, I've got insights about our advisors from our survey results. So I've got the net promoter score of 60, pretty happy with that. I've got um, role by MPS as well, so I can see how each of our teams are doing. So our sales team are getting a fantastic score at the moment. Customer managers, call center, still doing pretty well, and I've got a third group, another group here that's lagging a little bit behind. By individual agents, I can see, are they acting as an MPS? Are they uh, helping to be promoters or are they detractors? And I can see how that splits across categories. So great news is, amazingly, I've got 11 promoters, uh, only one passive customer and only three detractors. So I'm really happy with that. And I can see who my busiest advisors are as well. Finally, obviously, we've got case information. Why would we use it? So what are the channels our customers are engaging with us? What's the root cause of the problems they're having? And how are we doing in terms of closing cases? Does that match where we're receiving them? It looks like we're behind an email, which is exactly what that wallboard told us earlier. So using the streaming API, we have the wallboard updated in real time. We've been using things like uh, the analytics, the dashboards and reports, and Salesforce One as well, so that James can access that information on his phone. We're using process flows to send out notifications to employees to thank them and reward them. We're using the chat of thanks as well to uh, give badges to our uh, staff when they do a good job. And we've got the uh, analytics for the integrated surveys, summaries, and the omni-channel omni view of trends. Okay, Martin, back over to you. Yeah, thanks for that, Richard. So this, this slide, is, I hope you'll uh, remember, is a, is a replica of where we kicked off. So have, have have we um, addressed all those points uh, that we wanted to speak to? I think, I think for me, certainly a, 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 a huge yes, we have. Um, and what we've also tried to include on this slide is some of those proof points, some of those customers that we've delivered elements of um, the solution that Richard's just been through with you all. Um, I'd yes. also, also like to drive you to the um, makepositive.com website without wanting to sound too salesy if you want to know more about our customers and, and what we've delivered for them. Um, which I think is appropriate at this point. But sorry, Richard, you wanted to come back in? Yeah, everything I just demonstrated is real and working, and it's drawn from our experience. Positive contact is a new proposition we've put together, but actually it's just what we've been doing for the last six years, just pulled together as one experience and one demonstration. And thanks to all these customers for their input into that, and all our other customers, we didn't have room for their logos on. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, and, and uh, I would echo that. Everything, everything you've seen is 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 um, is all up and working. And, and please feel free to to kind of uh, come and have a more detailed uh, look with us um, as a as a follow up action on on your part. Um, just a little bit about um, Make Positive. Um, so we've delivered over 400 successful Salesforce projects. Um, we're predominantly uh, uh, UK based, although we have uh, offices in Gagan in India. Um, most, of, most of our deployment work is in the UK at the moment. Our certifications, uh, we have one technical architect, we have 17 service cloud, 
uh, and so on. Um, and some some really kind of in, impressive customers. If you, as I say, if you'd like to come and uh, get some more detailed information from us. Just one amendment: to that one certified tech market. We've got eight architects, all of which are on the program and have a, at least level one, two, or three of the certified tech market qualification. Okay, and as, as we've just looked at, we've looked at positive contact, but we also have other solution offers, um, such as positive applications and positive co collaboration. And finally, um, as I kind of, uh, we, I mentioned this earlier in terms of challenging when you last looked at your organization from a customer's perspective and actually called yourselves up or emailed yourselves and, and so on. If you're happy to do that, go ahead and do it and it'd be fantastic. If you want some support in that, um, we're happy to come along and do that for you. And for the first uh, five responders as a follow-up to this webinar, um, we'll book that in for you immediately as a free trial assessment, where what we'll do essentially is uh, run through, so what types of typical questions are your customers asking of you? Um, and then we'll take those questions away and we'll call you and email you and look on your website and whatever other contact channels you're using. Um, and then we'll come back and give you a summary of where you um, deliver against best practice uh, with some sort of initiatives that you might want to take on board um, to improve across all your channels. So that's free of charge to you. Um, that's just a bit of a, a thank you for coming along and listening and learning about positive contact. So I do hope you take us up on that. And as I say, the first five, we'll, we'll, we'll book those in immediately. And now it's, uh, it's, it's over to the audience for, for Q&A. Hi there, guys. Thank you for that. It's, um, that was very, very informative. Um, certainly up there with uh, one of the best that we've had on there. We, demo was great, so thank you for that. We'll open the, the floor. We haven't got too long, but um, I've just checked in the community and there are no questions there. But if anyone wants to pop any into the um, to the chat windows here, they can do that. Not, not many times we've had a little freebie thrown in at the end as well, so that's very kind of you. So uh, I would urge people if uh, if they want to do that, I'm sure sure Make Positive would do a would do a great assessment for you there, guys. Just just a quick question from me on this. Um, it, obviously you presented a, a great B two C example there. Presumably a lot of the principles where they might apply could easily be applied to a B two B environment as well using using some of these. Um, absolutely, absolutely, and that's the plan. Is the better PLC org is focused on retail at the moment, yeah. but we have some B two B examples, which is is generally more mature um, already. And we've done a number of those, um, but doing things like the case entitlements, getting the most out of the way that works, and milestones is a key part of that. Showing how ITIL can be used within uh, Salesforce. Those are some of the things we've got in our roadmap for February. Uh, but yeah, I think as well, Karen. I think certainly in terms of situational routing, um, it, well, whilst, it's, whilst it's incredibly important uh, for consumers, actually the more, the more detailed level of data that you typically hold is in a B2B environment. Mm. So actually that, that's, that's an even richer um, value for, for business to business. Um, but it is, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of crucial that you get right, that right across every channel. And again, the same goes for B2B. So you're absolutely right. A lot of the principles that we've driven through that demo are mirrored exactly in B2B. Okay. And it seems as though uh, you covered all those points so well that um, people have had all their questions answered. <laughs> um, so there's so there's no questions that I can answer. So on that note, I will just say um, thank you to the people for participating, and also thank you very much to um, Martin and Richard for their presentation from Make Positive. Thank you, thank you very much. Just we will going to post a poll on the success community. I've just got it on the screen now. Unfortunately, the user I'm using doesn't